In 1931, a young woman from southern Utah dreamed of writing the great American novel. Helen Foster's mother gave her a simple Kodak camera and challenged her to go out and see the world. And did she ever. Traveling to China by herself in 1931, she found that excitement and adventure. She also found love. In 1932, she became Mrs. Helen Foster Snow. No one could have predicted what was going to unfold in China in the 1930s. Now, by now, Snow had become a respected international journalist, and she had a front row seat to history. She saw war, famine, widespread human suffering. She also chronicled the start of China's Communist Party. Because of her important work during that important time, she is a well-known figure throughout China. However, back in the United States, her work during that moment in time still remains quite unknown. Cedar City, Utah, bills itself as an historic town, surrounded by breathtaking canyons. Early pioneers worked this red soil to mine iron. Here, at the entrance to the city park, stands a bronze statue, another important nod to history. One of the most important journalists of the 20th century that most Americans have simply never heard of, Helen Foster Snow, a fact her family readily admits. I would say Helen is the best kept secret between U.S.-China relations. Um, she really showed the example of what it means to be a bridge between our two countries. Helen arrived in Shanghai in 1931 to work at the U.S. consulate as a secretary. It was a time Westerners were pampered and lived a high life while in China. As she started seeing the suffering and noticed uh, the political upheaval that was going on, she realized that she had a much bigger part to play and she wanted to tell that story to the world. And that's when she met Edgar Snow. A hardened, experienced international journalist, Edgar Snow wrote one of the definitive books chronicling the start and growth of China's communist movement, called Red Star Over China. It was a time of great upheaval as factions wrestled for control of China. Japanese invaders, the Kuomintang Nationalist Party, and the fledgling Communist Party under Mao Zedong. She stopped thinking about herself, and she really found her voice in telling the stories of other people. And that's what her life was dedicated to for the next 80 years. By now, Helen and Edgar were married and lived in Beijing. And in 1937, Helen cemented her place in history when she risked her life to travel from Beijing to Yan'an in Shaanxi province to meet and interview Chinese Communist Party leaders such as Mao Zedong and Zhu Da. Helen Snow was one of the few eyewitnesses to the early period of the communist movement, uh, one of the early Western observers, and had been in Yan'an. In these caves is where this entire movement started. And so it's a very special place. It's uh, really where modern China was born. Hiding out in Shaanxi after the difficult long march through tough terrain, Helen too had undergone terrible suffering. She experienced incredible hardships, you know, dysentery, and she was sick. When she was in Yunnan, she was there for about four months interviewing these leaders and telling the, the stories of children and women. Her stories were published in newspapers throughout the world under the pen name of Nim Wales. By now, the Fosters say the Japanese wanted both Edgar and Helen assassinated, so they returned to the United States, Helen bringing a treasure trove of manuscripts, items, and nearly 11,000 photographs she took while in China. This is just a very small sampling of those uh, 10,000 or 11,000 images. In terms of history, just priceless. A young Mao next to Judah. And this rich collection was donated to Brigham Young University and is just now being preserved and chronicled. After returning home, Ellen and Edgar drifted apart, eventually divorcing. Edgar, a celebrated journalist and author. And what about Helen? Partly because she was a woman, you know, so, so during her time, she was not as recognized as Edgar. Uh, but even though, you know, her, her contributions were very comparable, you know, to, to Edgar's. And Helen withdrew from the world, living quietly in a small Connecticut town in the northeastern part of the U.S. until she died at the age of 89 in 1997. But ask the Fosters, who have grown to embrace and love China, considering the sour relations between Beijing and Washington, they believe the world needs another Helen Foster Snow. 
That's my favorite question. <laughs> um, and I, I think I get emotional about this. Everything I thought I knew about China was false. Um, and then when I went to China and met the people and their hospitality and their personality and just who they are, you know, I realized uh, they're just like me. Adam Foster created a foundation to keep Helen's work and memory alive and to help develop better people-to-people -people ties between China and the U.S. He hopes when one day people ask, have you ever heard of Helen Foster Snow? The answer will be, of course. What an amazing woman and an amazing story. Sean Caleb, CGTN, Salt Lake City, Utah.